Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of The Hobbit, Battle of the Five Armies. As the snowflakes cover my fallen brothers, I will say this last goodbye. I love Middle-earth, and I really love the Middle-earth that Peter Jackson has brought to the big screen over the course of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the latest Hobbit trilogy. I loved the Lord of the Rings films, as so many of you all did, and I actually have really enjoyed the Hobbit films as well. And I think this might be my favorite of the Hobbit trilogy. It's a close call between Smaug and this one. But, let's go ahead, jump right in to what this film succeeds in. So, if you are worried that the final installment of the Hobbit films follows the course that the last two do in the fact that it doesn't have a whole lot of action and it has way too much of Hobbit and Dwarf just walking around the Middle Earth, put your fears to bed because this movie is action-packed from the first moment it starts pretty much up until the last second that it cuts off. You, I was never bored personally. I thought the action was done really, really well. They intertwined some really cool um, small battles within the larger battles that were really fun to watch. And just the overall scope of the battles was amazing. I just thought the action was done really, really well. One off-the-wall scene that happens pretty much right at the beginning of the movie, uh, and I'll just say that it stars Gandalf and a few of his friends, was actually probably my favorite moment of the entire film. It really doesn't do much to add to this story. It, it does add questions to the mythology of the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, but it was just awesome. Like, flat-out awesome. And really, it was just my favorite moment of the whole film. But we're introduced to new creatures, we're introduced to new characters in this film. And I will say that Lee Pace as the elvish king, I'm not going to butcher his name here, um, really stole it for me. I don't know why this movie just elevated his character up to pretty much the top of my list. Because I already loved Thorin, and Thorin Oakenshield was actually given a lot more character development and more to do in this movie. I thought Martin Freeman just killed it throughout the entire trilogy as Bilbo. He just, he was wonderful for the role. He adapted it perfectly and he looked fantastic throughout all of it. He brought humanity and like a sense of home to this outlandish sci-fi world. And I think that's really what this series needed. And Martin Freeman was expert at creating that for us, the audience. And, of course, Ian McCallum continues to be wonderful as Gandalf. I really enjoyed Evangeline Lilly in the films as Toriel. I thought she did really well. The Orlando Bloom as Legolas. I know he's not in the original stories, but I'm really glad they decided to add him in here for the films because his addition was really welcomed. But overall, it was just a grand, epic scale for the final Middle-Earth film. And I had a blast. I thought there was enough story. I thought that there was definitely enough action. And it just, it felt right. It felt like a proper ending to something that we all love so much. And I just had a blast. I can't wait to go see it again. However, there were several things that this movie missed the mark on as well. Mainly, my problem with the Hobbit movies in general has been that the CGI just is it up to par to what the Lord of the Rings had already done? And that's pretty strange considering that one came out in the early 2000s and one has been coming out in the past, you know, post-2010 market. Technology has improved so much in that 10-year span that it, it's very odd to me that we've actually regressed in a lot of ways CGI. So when I watch these movies, so much of it just looks plasticky and rubbery. And I just, it takes me out every time. And some of these CGI characters, there was one in particular, there's this weird, like, fat, ugly little, like, goblin or troll. 
that comes midway through that looked really terrible. And he was so distractingly CGI that I couldn't get over it while he was on the screen. And the juxtaposition in these films is so weird because some of the time it looks so realistic, like Smaug, the close-ups of Smaug look so real and they're so re well realized. And then we go into video game work, you know, so that's the problem is half the time you feel like you're in awe because it's such amazing special effects and then the other half you kind of feel like you're playing a video game. Um, yeah, and I think that's a huge disservice. Also. I'm pretty sure they photoshopped Orlando Bloom's face throughout the majority of the film. He has this weird glow, they have to blush up his skin, like, it's a mess. I'm like, come on Orlando, what is this? I also felt one character in this movie was so annoying. I forget his name, you will know immediately, he has a unibrow and he's there as, I think, comic relief. Well, I didn't find him funny, I just found him annoying. And again, you shouldn't really be rooting for people to die in these kind of movies. I was rooting the entire time he was on screen for him to die. Period. I was like, oh my god, please, something, come in and swoop him up and kill him. Because I want him off my screen already. Ugh. Just, I was, I didn't like it. They also introduced some s characters and storylines that never see any kind of ending. And I know they leave it open for the Lord of the Rings, but there's such a gap between this one and the first Lord of the Rings movie that we're left still kind of wondering what happened here, like what's going on. So, eh, I know that they did it kind of as fan service to plug in some of your favorite characters from the first films, but it ended up leaving us feel a little bit unsatisfied, I think, instead. But overall, I definitely recommend that you go out and see the Final Hobbit installment. I think it is really well done. It is just an exciting film experience. They made this one so exciting, action-packed. All your favorite characters are there, and new characters that maybe you didn't love before will grow on you. I just think this is a really well done series. This is Peter Jackson's world. He's created Middle Earth for us. And especially if you're a fan of the first five films, you have to go along for the final ride. So if you haven't already seen it, get out there, see The Hobbit. I say see it on a big screen, pay full price. It's a nighttime kind of movie. If you've already seen it, go out, see it again, uh, matinee. But full price, recommendation. So, that has been my review of The Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, go ahead click like down below and subscribe to the channel while you're down there so you are always up to date on our latest videos. And don't forget to join in on the conversation. Have you seen The Hobbit already? What did you think? Are you looking forward to it? Comment in the comment section down below or let me know on Twitter. I love you all so much for your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.